I think for a large number of music lovers and audiophiles all over the world, the dream would be to own some Bowers & Wilkins 800 Diamond speakers. And that aspirational goal is even loftier in 2023, with the prices of them starting at £7,000 and going up to over £30,000. And the 803D4 that you can see sat there behind me, they cost £18,000. So if you save up all of your pennies and maybe live on noodles for a decade, and finally buy your dream speakers, what is the experience like and what should you expect? I want to start the review with a true story. When I was a much younger audiophile, the first speakers that I ever felt any connection to were some rock solid sounds, these pod type of speakers that I think Bowers had something to do with their engineering. And I had them in my bedroom at my parents' house, up on the wall. I used them with a Rail Q50 subwoofer. And I loved those speakers. I loved that system. I listened to music, I played games, I watched movies, and even did some DJing through that system. I loved that system. I thought it was great. And when I moved out and moved into my first own home, I was so excited because I could finally set the speakers up in a proper hi-fi fashion, up on stands, you know, away from walls, etc. And I remember spending all day, I spent hours setting up the system to be absolutely perfect. All the cables were neat and tidy. Everything was perfect. But before I had a chance to press play, I knocked one of the speakers off of the stands and it broke on the floor. And you can imagine how devastated I was. So I did the only thing an inconsolable audiophile could do, and that is I spent you know, all my money on some crazy expensive speakers, which were well, crazy expensive for me at the time. And maybe because I'm English, but I remember thinking the pinnacle of speakers were Bowers & Wilkins 800, and I think it was Diamond, maybe one at the time. I don't remember the range, but I remember not being able to afford them. But I found some original 805, some original Bowers 805s on eBay for a thousand pounds. And I thought, sod it, I'm just going to buy them. And a thousand pounds was a huge amount of money to me at the time. And it still is, you know, a, a large amount of money today. And not long after owning them, I actually moved house, I actually moved to this house. So I was in the listening room that you can see here, so yeah, kind of what I'm sitting in now, but it wasn't like this back then. But I could set the Bowers up, you know, properly. And my overriding experience with them was actually pretty disappointing. But what I looked back with now is that it wasn't a disappointing experience of the speakers. It's more of a disappointing experience for me or of me because I didn't really know how to set up a hi-fi system. I didn't know, I didn't own, I didn't really have the budget for the quality of hi-fi system that I would have needed to really get the best out of those speakers. So overall, it was a bit of a disappointing experience but not a wasted one because we always learn from our mistakes. But I always vowed, I vowed to myself that one day in the future, I would get some other Bowers 800 speakers in this listening room and I would really do them justice because I really want to know, you know, really wanting to get the full 800 experience. So that was the big motivator for me to complete the review of the 803 D4. And for me, the 803 is the sweet spot in the range because it's the most affordable way into the true 800 series form factor with the solid aluminium turbine head and the fully curved matrix braced cabinet. And it's also a speaker size-wise I thought would be okay in my listening room because it's a medium-sized speaker really, definitely not too room dominating in size. Being honest, I think this listening room is a bit too small to fully appreciate the size of soundstage that the ASO3 can create, but without too much trouble, I have been able to make them work in this smaller listening room, which could be great news for you if you also have a smaller listening room and you're considering these speakers. But do take into account, I probably have more acoustic treatment in this listening room than most studios, which is definitely a helpful factor.
Now what I don't want to do in this video is spend lots of time going over all of the improvements from the Diamond 3 to the Diamond 4 speakers because I've already done that in a video that I made at the Bowers & Wilkins factory for the launch of the Diamond 4 range. And you've likely already seen this video because it's had around a quarter of a million views. But if you haven't seen it, there'll be a link up the top for you and one in the video description box down below. And you should definitely watch this video because it helps to show and explain why the 800 series costs what it does. The manufacturing and the build quality really is next level impressive. But for some of the basics, the 803 weighs 63 kilograms. So they are very heavy speakers, but one of their best features, and I actually think this is a great feature, is their thick, heavy bases, which I think are aluminium, have casters integrated or built into them. So they're actually very easy speakers to move around. And that is really important because finding the perfect position in the room and the perfect towing is critical with these speakers. And those casters just make that whole job so much easier. You can literally just inch or just, you know, just nudge the speaker forward a little bit or side a little bit. And normally with a big heavy speaker, that's extremely difficult to do. And then, even better, I suppose, is that once you've found that perfect position in the room, there are some integrated spikes that you kind of unscrew and lower down, and then it raises the speakers off of the casters. So obviously then they're better isolated and they're securely in that position. And again, this is a bit of a fiddly job, but I just love this whole concept. I think it makes you know the setup of a high-end, very particular, very heavy speaker just that much easier. And again, this is really, really important. And the 803 feature that famous one inch diamond dome tweeter, housed in a solid aluminium tapering tube that's longer and better isolated with the new Diamond 4 range. And I think this is a very cool part of the speaker's look, especially from a side profile. And when I was doing all of the B-roll camera work for this video, I kept just going back to the top of the speaker. I was just drawn to its shape. It's very standout and it's very much Bowers. There is a five inch continuum cone mid-range driver that is spiderless. The spider is the often yellow stiff mesh that we see behind a driver's cone, which forms part of the suspension system. It stops the driver wobbling around and keeps the driver working pistonically. And when you think that's been replaced with this tiny, what Bowers call a biomimetic system, which really does seem very, very small, I found this whole concept for the new Diamond 4 range you know, super impressive because it gets more out of the way of the back wave of the driver, which inevitably gives a lower distortion mid-range driver. So that's definitely something that's a big deal for these speakers. Then for the base, there are dual seven inch aerofoil drivers with a down firing port. And for the lion's share of the time, the drivers barely seem to move, even at loud volumes. But I was able to get them going. And when you slow the footage down, their movement seems very impressive for its linear pistonic motion. But of course, you can't really see the magic of a driver's design with the naked eye. One spec I found interesting is that the 803 have a 90 decibel sensitivity, pretty reasonable, but they have a power rating of up to 500 watts. And this is really interesting because I found out very quickly that the amplifier power and quality and capability, drive capability is hugely influential, hugely important for these speakers. So if you're gonna step up to this kind of level of speaker, well then, maybe even a very good amplifier might not be good enough. I think you really need an excellent amplifier or amplifiers with the 803. Maybe monoblocks in some guys or another if you really want to get out of them their full capability. And I don't say this to kind of over exaggerate or scare monger anybody, but it is something to be, con you know, something to consider, something to be mindful of. Continuing in this honest vein, I think to give you, you know, a really deep level of explanation of what the 803 
are all about. I would have needed to have had them here for at least, you know, at least three months and used them with a whole variety of high-end equipment. But that hasn't been the situation for this review. The Bowers have been here for a good time, not so much for a long time. But I've listened to them a lot and I completed the lion's share of their review with two different systems. But the main system was all from Cord Electronics and their Ultima range. And I've already gone into a lot of sound quality specific details in their video review that I'll link up the top there for you. And I don't want to simply repeat myself, but everything positive I said about the Cord Ultimas, really I was saying about the Bowers too. So you may want to check out that video as well. Instead, for my sound quality assessment, I'm going to be comparing the Bowers to my own reference speakers, the Mission 770, which at less than a quarter of the retail price, you might think is a silly comparison. However, I think the 803 could well be, you know, the Mission 770 owner's next speaker on in their journey. So I actually think this type of comparison is actually very relevant. And straight away, I noticed that the Bowers are a much fussier speaker in every regard. And for some context, the Mission's superpower is they are easy to place in the room, relatively easy to drive, and relatively easy to get very good sounding music from. The Missions are a speaker that within about 15 minutes of setup, five hours later, you're still sat there listening to great sounding music. They really are just excellent in that regard, really just easy to get great sounding music from. Whereas with the Bowers, that definitely wasn't the case for me. I had to really think about their position in the room. So we're talking like inches, like tiny little adjustments to really find it and to lock the sound in. Then I had to also think about how I had my hi-fi system set up and its sound balance. Its sound balance had to really match and work with the Bowers. So that's not something that you really have to think about so much with the missions. So there has to be more thought process going on, and more work to go into the Bowers. But the work is definitely worth it. The results are there. Bowers 800 speakers have been a little notorious for having a lively treble, I think since the tweeters became Diamond, so for a number of years now. But Bowers told me when I was at the factory that the new Diamond 4 range is supposed to sound nicer and sweeter in the treble than previous generations. And I have to say, I think the tweeter treble capability of the 803 is absolutely fantastic. The scale, the height, scale, the details, the intricacy within music and just the way, you know, the energy, the immediacy, the way music can get out of the 803 is really impressive. And at one point I was sitting there thinking, wow, this reminds me of the immediacy of sound. This reminds me of listening to some very expensive avant-garde horn speakers. And normally, you know, you would never do any type of, you know, comparison between a horn speaker and a traditional dome tweeter, tweeter based speaker. That's normally wildly different. So for there even to be some kind of comparison there, it, super impressive. The tweeter, the diamond tweeter on top, it, you know, it is a very much a standout strength of the 803. But I also think yeah, it's still lively. It's still a lively treble. It's still something you need to think about and balance with the system and balance as part of the setup. So it is possible for the 803 to come across maybe a little bit too lively. But if you get things right, well, then that real, you know, it's a real standout strength of the speaker. With the mission, the treble is always laid back always super relaxed and always smooth by comparison. I think that's what makes it the less fussy speaker, but there are just bits that are not there as a trade-off to that. And you hear that the 803 takes the dynamic extremes further, especially with the height of the soundstage. And I think the vocals ties in with this as well because the mid-range and vocal region from the Bowers is favoring a leaner, more technically accurate sound, going for outright clarity. I think especially going down into the lower vocal upper bass regions. And vocals do sound particularly clear and particularly clean through the Bowers. And I really like that they have this wonderful kind of roundedness, three-dimensionality, which I think is built on the bass, which we'll talk about in a second, but it's really impressive. I love it when a speaker gives vocals calls this rounded character. But interestingly, mentioning the word character, listening to you know vocals through the Mission 770, they have a very pleasing type of character, this naturally pleasing, quite warm, 
and quite vintage sounding character for the vocals. So actually the missions I think have an edge there in terms of a, a vocal pleasingness, if that is such a thing. Whereas the 803 have this more lay it bare, more clean overall, kind of let you in type of sound. So both of the speakers are impressive in their own ways, but I think for actual just outright pleasingness, the Mission 770 have the edge. Bass is very interesting because the Mission performed brilliantly in this room and are very satisfying speakers to listen to, even digging pretty deep and being quite punchy at times. But the Bowers do offer a very noticeable level above this in terms of their bass delivery. They were delivering more bass overall with better definition and control. More bass pressure feeling with that type of music still with better articulation and resolution in a grander sounding overall scale of soundstage because of the grander sense of scale of bass. Also kick drums were sounding particularly good through the system. There was just something about the character and the tonal character and the quality and the, the tight articulation of the kick drum sound, that FUD sound that I was really enjoying through the, you know, the Cord and the Bowers system. But maybe I wouldn't have minded a bit more bass from the speakers still, just a bit more. You know, I generally always do, but just a bit more to make them more very good subwoofer like. And that's where I think maybe a bigger amplifier Back to what I said about amplifiers, a bigger, more powerful amplifier, I think maybe could have, you know, helped to deliver that. And I think the bass difference with the perception of the more extended dynamic range at the treble end of things leads me on to the two biggest differences between the speakers. The first one is scale. And interestingly, I think both speakers create a vocal scale that's very, very similar. The size of the vocals were very similar in this room. And also interestingly, the depth to the sound stage, the sound that goes beyond the speakers, that felt about the same you know, depth from both of the speakers. And I think this is because this room size layout and everything is probably the limiting factor to that. But interestingly, outside of that, the way the Bowers created the scale of sound. So the way the, the rest of the sonic images were being presented in the room or to the side or up above that height soundstage is really something, it really adds something, that extra height. The Bowers were able to create this bigger and clearer, more three-dimensional, bringing the sound more out into the room, combined with that depth, and everything was just bigger and clearer, and yeah, just yeah, overall definitely more impressive, more realistic, and more impressive. And the last big difference comes back to the energy of the music and the immediacy or the way it gets out of the speakers. The Bowers sound like a much faster speaker, like there is less in the way of you and the music. And sometimes this is for the worse, depending on the music quality, I think, but most of the time it's for the betterment. But I found this aspect of the 803 sound quality very much system dependent. So to sum up this pretty long review, I have really enjoyed my time with the 803D4. Once I'd got them dialed in and once I'd worked a few things out, I've really enjoyed listening to music with them. And I think that's because it's been giving me this very nice uplifting feeling. And normally you can get an uplifting feeling from lively upbeat music, but I was getting a lot uplifted feeling from even slower stuff, even older types of music. It was just the way it was coming on with this type of presentation. It was just, it was just making me feel good. And yeah, sometimes made me want to get up and dance. It's so cheesy to say that, but that's genuinely how I felt. And I don't feel like I let myself down this time. I feel like I had a really good system here for the 803 and getting, I've got a really good taste of what they're all about. But I also feel like, you know, a couple of weeks is only really just the beginning of a journey to get to know a speaker like this. And I feel like over time, there could be more to come. You know, I see these as like a, what I call an investment type of speaker. You invest in them and then over a long period of time of ownership, 10, 20, 30 or more years, you know, you can, you can upgrade the system, work on things to keep, you know, squeezing, I call it squeezing more sound quality out of them. But I want to close out the video with a, with a thought really, am I going to be sad to be going back to the Mission 770 after a few weeks with the Bowers? No, because the missions are still excellent speakers and they still deliver really well in a lot of key areas. But I'm definitely going to miss the 803 D4. <laughs> it's like the reviewer thing, nobody would know it unless you do this job. You get the system sounding great, and then you have to pack it all down and it has to go back. There's nothing worse than that, especially when you've really just started to 
enjoy it. And I have really enjoyed my time. So thank you to Bowers for the opportunity. This is definitely one of those audio file bucket list things that I can tick off. So I hope you've enjoyed this review. I hope you found it useful and helpful. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button. And if you enjoy my take on hi-fi reviewing, please subscribe to the channel.